Genetic variants at these genes may make some right-handed people more Good afternoon friends, I hope your day is going excellently. In this video, I'm going to tell you why ambidextrous people are actually not as gifted as they may seem. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you are not already, like the video and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. Now first, before we get started, why I'm particularly interested in this. At an early age, I was told that there were some people that were not simply right-handed or even left-handed, but equally handed, two-handed people. It sounded like some kind of gift, a power that they developed. And the ambidextrous people I met early in life, I consequently thought of as very gifted people. What is this genetic gift that makes some people able to use both hands while most of us can only use one? That's one question. The second reason I'm interested in this subject is because of something that happened to me personally. Sometime around 2015 to 2017, I experienced a change in my ability to use both arms. Initially in my life, I was right-handed, very much so. And not only that, but my right hand was stronger than my left hand. In fact, my right arm measured a whole inch or so bigger than my left arm did for most of my life. In around 2015, 2017, when I was in my mid-twenties, this began to change. What I noticed is that my right arm seemed to be a bit weaker than it used to be. And over time, my left arm seemed to become stronger than my right arm. In most functions, but not in the hand strength. This was very evident for me because I was an arm wrestler. So I would note that my left arm seemed to be improving at different rates than my right arm as I trained. I eventually realized that I must have some kind of neurological damage to the right side of my body. And over time, the right side of my body sort of atrophied slightly. But the most shocking outcome of all this isn't that when my arms were their biggest during my lifetime, my right arm actually was smaller than my left arm, half an inch smaller. This reversal wasn't the most shocking part. What was more shocking is that over the last few years, I've noticed that some tasks have become easier for me with my left hand. I've almost become ambidextrous. Even writing with my left hand is quite a bit easier, which doesn't really make sense because writing with my right hand is still completely easy. I didn't actually lose an ability to use my right arm. It just became a bit weaker and eventually a little bit smaller. But in, in that happening, I gained some ability to use my left hand. How did this happen? So this this video is about that reason. It's about a 2020 paper that discovered in the data, in the statistics, a plausible explanation for why people actually become two-handed. This is what we're going to discuss in this video. Now before we get started, how often are people left-handed or ambidextrous in the first place? This question was not solved until very recently in fact. It turns out that apparently about a 10 to 1 ratio is found among right-handed people to left-handed people, but also among right-handed people to ambidextrous people. Essentially, there's about a 10% incidence of left-handed people and about the same incidence of ambidextrous people. Although I am suspicious that ambidextrous incidence changes across people's lifetimes, but this hasn't been well studied yet. The next subject we have to talk about is laterality. What does that mean? Laterality means your brain being very different on one hemisphere, one side versus the other side. Most people have a lot of laterality in the functions of their brains, but not all people. And this is connected to right-handedness and left-handedness. You see, originally it was thought that the incidence of left-handedness was linearly associated with the opposite lateralization as right-handed people have. Right-handed people are generally have their language centers in the left hemisphere of their brain, but 97% of healthy right-handers are like that. Whereas left-handed people were classically thought to have the language in their right hemisphere. This turns out not to be entirely true. True. Instead, the relationship appears to be that left-handed people have less lateralization in general of language and of other parts of the brain. That means that left-handedness is not associated linearly with the opposite lateralization than right-handedness is, but rather it's non-linearly associated with atypical localization of functions, particularly with less lateralization as well. And fMRI studies seem to confirm this. Left-handed people seem to have less inhibition of the non-dominant part of the brain, if there is one. And unfortunately, there haven't been fMRI studies particularly on ambidextrous people. But I think it's safe to assume that they have less lateralization in their brains like left-handed people. The question is how they ended up that way. It seems to be that left-handed people end up genetically predisposed toward less lateralization of functions in their brain, less clearly distinct hemispheres or hemispheric functions, whereas I believe that ambidextrous people may end up that way through experience. So let's talk about this. What's the heritability of handedness? 
How predisposed are people to being left-handed genetically? Well, you may be surprised to know that IQ is far more heritable than handedness. For example, twin studies estimate that IQ is about 40% heritable, whereas genome-wide association studies that study the statistical associations with certain genetic variants and an outcome like IQ find that about 60 to 80% of the incidence of IQ is explained by genetic models that predict your IQ just through your genetics. On the other hand, handedness is only predicted to be about 25% heritable from twin studies, whereas genome-wide association studies can only explain about 3.5% of the incidence of handedness through our genes. And this brings us to the 2020 study that I really wanted to discuss. This is the study using the largest data set ever to do a genome-wide association study on left-handedness and ambidexterity. What they discovered about left-handedness was not so surprising. It was in line with previous studies. But what they discovered about the genetic predisposition toward ambidexterity was eye-opening and unfortunately has not been commented on enough by other academics yet. Now, both left-handedness and ambidexterity were predicted by certain genes, but the genes that predicted them were a bit different in character. They both had effects particularly in the nervous system System. But left-handedness associated genes were also associated positively with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, uh, educational achievement, and in fact most prominently with brain size, such that left-handed people have bigger brains. On the other hand, ambidexterity was best predicted by polymorphisms, genetic variants, at genes associated with chronic pain, disability, physical disability, and body mass index. So this essentially means that left left-handedness was associated with behaviors that are associated with mental disease but also with intelligence, educational achievement and the size of the brain in particular, and schizophrenia and bipolar disorder which when they don't actually occur make people unusually productive or creative. While ambidexterity was associated most with genes that seem to predispose people toward being disabled, handicapped, obese potentially, and in general, more predisposed toward experiencing a certain injury in life, which then disables them so severely that they end up recorded in statistical studies as being disabled people. Now, the author's discussion in the paper goes only so far. They theorize that essentially some genes predispose people towards being left-handed, and a different set of genes predisposes people toward, and they weren't so specific, either getting more injuries or not recovering from the injuries very well, such that those people end up much more likely to be ambidextrous to the degree that those are the main associations with ambidexterity, such that left-handed people may be born different somehow and ambidextrous people may be born prone to injury. Essentially, ambidextrous people are people who got injured very early and had to adapt to it. Whereas left-handed people are that way because their brains may be more predisposed toward either adaptation to small injuries or functioning slightly differently than ours. And this can be explained, for example, with genes that predispose left-handed people to more plasticity in their nervous system. Plasticity happens when there are more growth factors in the nervous system, meaning the nervous system can reorganize itself and develop more connections than other nervous systems. Well, people that are left-handed are more likely to be bipolar. People that are bipolar generally have higher dopamine signaling in particular. They're more likely to be schizophrenic. Schizophrenia requires a lot of brain plasticity later in life to be able to accomplish it. And they're more likely to have bigger brains. And that in particular is directly determined by the amount of growth factors you have in your brain throughout your life. So it may be, for example, simply explained if we use a simple model, that left-handed people become left-handed because they have more plasticity in their nervous systems. Maybe left-handed people, now I'm going way past the, what the paper indicated, but maybe left-handed people, for example, may be more predisposed to getting ambidextrous if they had a good enough injury than right-handed people. This was not studied in the paper and not even discussed. They may be, because of the plasticity, more adaptable than right-handed people. But the people that are actually ambidextrous are the people that were injured. So statistically, the injury-related genes are going to show up the most. Now, I went a little bit too far there. The academics certainly didn't discuss all of that in the paper. And those are some of my hypotheses and analyses. But did anyone ever mention this before this 2020 paper? Did anyone ever think that ambidexterity may be associated with injury? There is actually one paper from 2004 that was unfortunately only cited twice and for the wrong reasons. 
That paper was a case report of somebody who, who suffered a very severe TBI, traumatic brain injury, and they recovered unusually well. For some reason, the authors posited that he may have recovered unusually well because he happened to be ambidextrous. They thought that being ambidextrous may indicate better resilience in the brain somehow. They didn't mention that it may be ambidexterity, it may be due to injury, and the fact that you're ambidextrous means that you were able to adapt to that injury, therefore you have some certain level of plasticity or something in your brain to where you can adapt. They didn't go that far though. They may basically theorize that ambidexterity may be somehow associated with brain resilience, and in particular that the resilience that ambidexterity causes may enhance what's called cognitive reserve. I just remembered that they mentioned that. Cognitive reserve, for those that don't know, is the observation that people don't experience behavioral or cognitive issues until they lose quite a bit more of their brains than we would assume they would need to lose. So for example, in Parkinson's disease, about 70% of the dopaminergic neurons in the brain have to be lost before somebody starts to act with Parkinsonian-like symptoms. That gap between the predicted damage that would be needed to cause Parkinsonian-like symptoms and the actual amount of damage that's needed is called cognitive reserve. The authors in this paper theorize that maybe the same thing that causes this ambidexterity related resilience also enhances cognitive reserve which allowed this person to be able to recover. So now after reviewing the papers let's describe what my mental model of the causal mechanisms may be. First ambidexterity appears to be mostly an adaptation to injury. Second ambidexterity seems to be an adaptation to injury that happens mostly in the nervous system. Third nervous system injuries happen mostly to people who are genetically predisposed either toward experience those nervous system injuries or recovering poorly from those nervous system injuries. Genetic variants at these genes may make some right-handed people more prone to injury and therefore more prone to becoming ambidextrous. So it's not the adaptive genetic polymorphisms that are causing the ambidexterity, but rather the likelihood to get injured in the first place being the major factor. This would assume that right-handed people are generally quite capable at becoming ambidextrous if they were injured enough. But a further note here, and something that I offer that hasn't been discussed before, is that maybe left-handed people may be more capable at becoming ambidextrous because they have more repetitive functions in their brains. There's less lateralization overall, meaning some functions in the brain are more likely to be repeated in different parts. So I think that they would adapt better to an injury to the left side of their bodies than right-handed people. Unfortunately, this was not analyzed statistically in the 2020 paper and remains to be discussed in the first place and then studied in particular. So what are the takeaways we can take from this? First of all, if you are a right-handed person, it may indicate that you have less repetitive, redundant functions in your brain meaning your brain, your nervous system is slightly less resilient to injury, but potentially more efficient if not injured. Second, if you're left-handed, you may have both an unusual structure of your brain and more repetitive, redundant functions in your brain due to having less lateralization. Therefore, you may be more gifted to adapting to injury. And finally, if you're ambidextrous, it may mostly be an indicator of you having been injured earlier in life than others. Anyway, friends, I hope you found this interesting and maybe slightly useful. We now know at the very least that ambidextrous people are most likely not unusually gifted, but more likely to be unusually prone to injury and be people that are adapting and resilient. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning.